त्रिनादपी सुनिचैना तुरादिवा सहिष्णुना मानिना मनदेना कीर्तनिया सदा हरि हरे नाम हरे नाम हरे नाम ऐव केवलम क्लो नास्केव 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 गतिरन्यथा वेलकम एवरीबॉडी our host madan there he is he has requested that i speak on the significance of being a devotee and specifically he wants me to speak from bhagavad gita chapter 12 and if time permits I have some more added information from the Bhagavad Gita and of course from the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I'd like to bless Madan and his family for sponsoring this Namahat and I hope it becomes a yearly affair here. All blessings on your family. Please repeat Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya So chapter 12 is entitled bhakti yoga devotional service and i broke out this 12th chapter of bhagavad gita into three divisions first is verses 1 through 7 which i have entitled the personalist versus the impersonalist kindly hear with rapt attention because this bhagavad gita is the essence of all the vedas in shankaracharya's gita mahatmyam he says that there is a cow and that cow is the 108 upanishads and somebody is milking the cow the best cowherd boy lord sri krishna and a cow will give milk in the presence of its calf the calf is arjuna and so milking this cow of 108 upanishads out comes the milk known as bhagavad gita Now who is the milk for? Shankaracharya says the milk is for devotees who have theistic mentality. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says there are two kinds of people: theists and atheists. Bhagavad Gita is for the theists. If you were not a theist, you would not be here right now this room is for theists those who believe in god so arjuna opens the chapter asking a question which are considered to be more perfect those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service all those who worship the impersonal brahman the unmanifested this question is a question that has been asked for millions of years it is still being asked to this day because it is a fundamental vedanta question should god be worshiped in his personal form or should god be worshiped impersonally let us see how krishna responds 
Those of you who know Bhagavad Gita know that in writing this Bhagavad Gita in his Mahabharata, Vyasadeva purposely did not say Krishna Uvacha, but instead Bhagavan Uvacha. Because Bhagavan emphasizes, oh, this is God speaking. This is the person who is the topmost authority. He's speaking. Otherwise, if he had wrote Krishna Uvacha, someone may think, oh, it's just some guy named Krishna. So Vyasadev does not want the reader to have any misconceptions. Who is speaking Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavan, the possessor of all opulences. The personality of God had said, those who fix their minds on my personal form and who are always engaged in worshiping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be most perfect. Not just perfect. In Arjuna's question when was, who is more perfect? Krishna says, no, most perfect. And he said, who worship my personal form. What does that mean? Certainly it means the form of the deity, for sure. But that personal form includes his holy name. We should not misunderstand and think that Krishna's name is simply symbolic. Uh-uh. Actually, Krishna's name is called Nama Prabhu. It is a person. So when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, we are worshiping Krishna's personal form, non-different than worshiping his archa murti form. And then he said, with great and transcendental faith, if we have time, Lord Chaitanya will speak about this great and transcendental faith. Just in case we don't get there, where do you get faith? Reading Bhagavad Gita is how you get faith. Beyond reading Bhagavad Gita, associating with devotees is how you get faith. That's why this program is essential. Because by coming together, hearing Krishna Kata, imperceptibly, your faith increases. Imperceptibly means you don't know how it's happening, but it happens. Simply by associating with devotees. That is why Prabhupada created an international society. Exactly for that purpose. Because nobody can become self-realized in this day and age by themselves. It's not going to happen. And Lord Chaitanya's principle is association with devotees is the major factor how you make advancement. Let us continue. Krishna then says, but those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, that which is all-pervading, that which is inconceivable, that which is unchanging, the fixed and immovable. In other words, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth. And how do you do that? Controlling the senses, being equally disposed to everyone. Such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. In other words, this process, the impersonal process, 
takes a long, long, long time. Prabhupada gives the example. I was in, a long time ago, I was in Kuala Lumpur. They have one of the tallest buildings in there. And they have this elevator that is like super fast. It's one of the fastest elevators and gets you quick. You got to really hold on and it just shoots you up to the top. Now, if you want to walk, go right ahead. I'm not going to walk. I took the elevator. So this bhakti mark where Krishna says, those who worship my personal form are most perfect. That is the elevator. Those who take to the impersonal, they're walking up the stairs. It's going to take a long time. But Krishna's not finished. Listen to what Krishna says. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifest, impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. The exact Sanskrit, klesha adhikataras, klesha, suffering, troublesome, painful. Who wants suffering? Who wants painful? Who wants trouble? Right, nobody in their right mind, according to Krishna, would take to the impersonal path. To make progress in that impersonal discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. That means everybody in the material world. Because that was the first lesson of Bhagavad Gita. You are embodied. Dehi no sminyata dehi. You are the soul embodied. Now Krishna finishes. So first he said, this is the best. Then he gave a comparative analysis, gave his opinion. Now he finishes up. But those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service, and always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Pritha, for them I am the swift deliverer. That adjective, swift, swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. He didn't say that about the impersonalist. He was saying, you worship me, give up your activities to me, devoted to me, engaged in devotional service, always meditating upon me, fixing your... That's the personalist path. For them, I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. Case closed. That is our first sermon for today. If you accept Krishna's opinion, then you know what to do. If you don't accept Krishna, I tried my best. Everybody chant the Maha Mantra. 